Hello guys, it's Revolution. On this video, we are going to talk about Broly's absolutely insane growth throughout the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie based on all the information we've received so far and we've received pretty much the full amount of information regarding the movie, especially in terms of how Broly fares against Goku and Vegeta in their specific transformations. But before we get into this, I must warn you, this video will contain a plethora of spoilers concerning Dragon Ball Super Broly. If you do not want to be spoiled about this movie and you're holding out to see the movie itself, that's absolutely fine. I commend your patience, but this video is not for you. But do check out one of these videos concerning the insane abilities of Whis and his father, the Grand Priest, as they will contain no spoilers concerning this movie. But everything from this point on will concern spoilers. You have been warned. This video will be focusing on the insane adaptation and Zenkai boost that Broly gets throughout the battle against Goku and Vegeta and Gogeta. This scaling will be based on all the spoilers we've received so far and I would like to say the most thorough breakdown of all the spoilers we have so far is from Anime AJ. Check out his latest video concerning this information. Credit where credit's due, it is the most thorough amount of information we've received so far. Props to my fellow Brit. Anyway, this video will be concerning power scaling. Let's get to it. But before I get into it, who would you like to see Broly face in the future of Dragon Ball Super? Broly is alive and well at the end of the Dragon Ball Super the Broly movie, but would you rather see him face the God of Destruction Beerus or the powerful warrior from Universe 11, Jiren in the Grey? Drop your thoughts down in the comment section, I look forward to reading them. And a massive thank you to all of you who have supported my channel Revolution. I've just surpassed 13,000 subscribers. My humblest gratitude to every single one of you. Do keep lending me your energy, keep smashing that like button, and if you're on Instagram or Twitter, do come follow me on those social media platforms. There are links to both of my accounts in the pinned comment. So based on all the information we know, Broly initially attacked Vegeta in base. He doesn't attack Goku first, he attacks Vegeta. Vegeta is literally dodging his attacks effortlessly for quite a while, literally smacking Broly around. However, Vegeta is impressed that Broly is managing to connect at least with Vegeta's blocks, etc. And the fact that he's able to keep up somewhat and seems to be catching up. Remember guys, Vegeta in base is incredibly powerful at this point. This is a post Battle of Gods base Vegeta. Even if this was a Boo Saga Vegeta or even a Cell Saga Vegeta in base, the fact that Broly is able to keep up somewhat with this base Vegeta is incredible. We often take for granted how strong these characters have got. Freezer deemed every Saiyan with a power level of over 2000 worthy of murdering. So that tells you that that was considered powerful back in in the day. And if I take you back to the Saiyan saga when Vegeta first arrived on Earth and fought against Goku, Vegeta had a power level of 18,000. Vegeta was considered a prodigy by his father, however in this movie of course it was revealed that Vegeta, King Vegeta that is, feared Broly's power level and he's even more of a prodigy than Vegeta is. Broly was therefore sent to Planet Vampa where he literally boosted his power fighting against these spider creatures and snake-like beings. So I already feel like they've put more attention to power scaling in this movie. Not only is Broly a prodigy of prodigies, he has had battle experience on his planet, a really harsh environment where he's being attacked by these powerful monsters that even Paragus fears. Paragus is stated to have a power level of 4,200 in this movie, albeit an older and more frail Paragus. So they've put the groundwork into explaining Broly's insane power already. I must say I appreciate the groundwork being done. They don't always do that, especially in Dragon Ball Super in terms of explaining how certain characters got so powerful. We haven't even started talking about adaptation yet. Now Broly's adaptation ability seems to be far more potent than Goku and Vegeta's naturally. What is adaptation? Well it's sort of like a Zenkai but Zenkais were always implied to need a full recovery first before the Saiyan profited from an insane power boost after defeat or near-death experience. Essentially Zenkai boosts were basically a plot device. The boost from Zenkai boosts varied in order to serve the plot. That's why a lot of power scalers often acknowledge Zenkai boosts but don't actually measure them because they're hard to quantify. The major boost gained from Zenkai's kind of faded after Super Saiyan was introduced on planet Namek as transformations became the more prominent plot device used in order to explain why the fighters were getting stronger. That doesn't mean the Saiyans weren't getting Zenkai boosts anymore but their potency was fading over time which was pretty much confirmed in Dragon Ball Super. In the manga, Future Trunks literally told us this, in the anime it was pretty much shown 
in Goku's fight against Goku Black. Goku Black was growing far faster than Goku was. There is one little plot hole here, and that's the fact that we don't actually see Goku Black recovering or taking a Senzu Bean as such, but you could argue that he has Godly Key, and technically Goku Black was simply just Zamasu and was a god. Maybe he had healing factors. After all, we did see Super Saiyan God Goku heal himself in the Battle of God Saga against Beerus, even though we haven't actually seen him do that since. So unless these adaptation boosts are pretty much the retcon Zenkais, then basically they're two different things, but kind of the same thing at the same time. It is confusing, but this is what Toriyama had to say about adaptation boosts in an interview for the Battle of Gods movie. Now, of course, this is for the movie, but as we can see throughout the course of the anime, it also applies to the growth and power throughout fights. He talks about the famous God scale, Albira's strength is a 10, and Goku would be a 6 in Super Saiyan God, and Whis would be a 15. He says only Saiyans rapidly increase in strength strength as they fight against strong opponents. So the longer they fought, the more that gap would shrink and it might even be possible for them to eventually turn the tables. As we even saw in the Tournament of Power, Goku grew in strength throughout the tournament itself faring better and better against Jiren the Grey even without Ultra Instinct as the tournament wore on. With his Saiyan DNA imprinting on the previous experiences and profiting from it by adapting to it and becoming stronger. With all that being said, back to Broly vs Vegeta. Base Vegeta, a post Battle of Gods base Vegeta is still too strong for Broly but Broly is catching up and that in itself is pretty damn remarkable. Vegeta turns Super Saiyan and starts to absolutely dominate Broly yet again but over time as the fight wears on, Broly in base manages to catch up to Super Saiyan Vegeta. Vegeta then turns Super Saiyan God. But let's just hold up a little bit there because Broly has literally gone from weaker than base Vegeta, albeit a post battle of gods base Vegeta, which is very impressive as I keep saying, to being able to force Vegeta to go Super Saiyan God. Vegeta is capable of Super Saiyan 2. Obviously, we've never seen him demonstrate Super Saiyan 3, but Super Saiyan 2 is a hundred times base multiplier. It's still unclear whether we get to see Vegeta actually use Super Saiyan 2 against Broly. It looks like he only uses regular Super Saiyan, but don't forget guys, this is a mastered Super Saiyan. Fully powered Super Saiyan, or some people call it Grade 4 Super Saiyan. But it doesn't really matter because Vegeta eventually decides to become Super Saiyan God. Now this is the stacked Super Saiyan God, not the ritual Super Saiyan God that Goku used in Battle of Gods where he potentially became billions of times stronger. Stack Super Saiyan God appears to be far closer to the multiplier of Super Saiyan 3. Super Saiyan 3 is a 400 times base multiplier as per the super exciting guides. Stacked Super Saiyan God or Saiyan Beyond God Super Saiyan God is faster and stronger than even Super Saiyan 3. How much stronger? We don't really know. I did make a video covering this. How strong is Super Saiyan God now in relevance to Super Saiyan 3, for example. However, Anime AJ does say in his video that Broly cannot even even get near Super Saiyan God Vegeta, despite his incredible adaptation boost throughout the fight against Vegeta, we do know that he has at least grown over 100 times in the space of this battle alone in his base. And remember, transformations are simply multipliers of base. This is where we get to see yellow-eyed base Broly, in which Paragus explains it as the Uzaru transformation entrapped within a humanoid figure. Sounds a little bit like Super Saiyan 4, but of course, we don't actually see Super Saiyan 4 here. And just for clarification, I am not saying this is Super Saiyan 4 in any regard because Super Saiyan 4 is ultimately a hybrid transformation between regular Golden Haired Super Saiyan and the Uzaru transformation. However, we do know that the Uzaru transformation is somewhat involved in this yellow white base Broly. We know that Uzaru is a 10 times multiplier of power. Does that mean it is for Broly? Who knows? But this allows Broly to tank a full-on punch from Super Saiyan God Vegeta. Now, Anime AJ does say in this video that we don't see Super Saiyan God Vegeta get hurt or beaten here, as was heavily rumored before the spoilers came out. But Vegeta is taken aback by Broly's new power. It does suggest that Broly is on the power level at this specific point of Super Saiyan God Vegeta and possibly even higher. But Goku steps in here and fights him in his base. And of course, Goku doesn't do very well. And then he goes Super Saiyan and once again doesn't do very well and eventually becomes Super Saiyan God himself. I know it seems a little bit silly Goku rushing into this battle in base after Broly has just demonstrated power on par with Super Saiyan God Vegeta but it's likely just a cinematic thing to show off Goku's transformations off in this movie especially with Shintani now on board rather than Yamamoro. However Super Saiyan God Goku gets walloped. Once again this is stacked Super Saiyan God Goku not 
ritual Super Saiyan God Goku. And if we go back to Battle of Gods, the Battle of Gods Super Saiyan God Goku was the one who clashed fists with Beerus and almost collapsed the universe. This version of Super Saiyan God Goku and Vegeta are far stronger than Battle of Gods Super Saiyan God Goku. But don't forget guys, Broly is still growing from his extremely potent adaptation. Sure, you could say that the yellow eye based Broly is a transformation itself, but Goku then turns Super Saiyan Blue Super Saiyan God turning Super Saiyan, potentially a 50 times increase over his Super Saiyan God transformation, and he still gets beaten. However, Goku and Vegeta start to team together and start to get the better of Broly two on one. However, seeing this, Freezer decides to kill Paragus in order to trigger the emotional transformation of Super Saiyan, and of course it works. Broly turns into a Super Saiyan and then starts decimating Goku and Vegeta in Super Saiyan Blue. I don't know if they even mention Blue Kaioken or Blue Evolution. I hope it's at least mentioned. Those are the finer details that we'll get within the next month, but they deem it not worth using against this version of Broly. This version of Broly is far too strong, as well as the fact that Kaioken, as well as Evolution, both induce added fatigue, especially Blue Kaioken, and the whole while Broly would just be growing stronger. We also got some information from the manga that Goku and Vegeta's Super Saiyan Blue transformations are actually mastered Super Saiyan Blue transformations as of the Tournament of Power. But it should come as no surprise that Broly getting a 50 times increase in power from turning Super Saiyan is far too much for Goku and Vegeta in Super Saiyan Blue, who are only able to beat yellow eye based Broly two on one with the Super Saiyan Blue transformations, mastered Super Saiyan Blue transformations. But given that Super Saiyan 3 is a 400 times multiplier, and if we lowball the stack Super Saiyan God multiply and say it's somewhere around two times that of Super Saiyan 3, that will make 800. Times that by 50 for Super Saiyan Blue, that will be 40,000 times base. Broly has managed to catch up with that in just his yellow eye base Broly form, even if you take into the account that that could be a 10 times multiplier considering the Usari effects of the yellow eye base Broly transformation. That's a 4,000 times increase in power over that in the space of one battle. And that is me lowballing. It's likely far higher than that. Of course, Goku and Vegeta would go away to learn the Metamoran fusion and become Gogeta. He would return and fight Broly in his base, suggesting that base Gogeta is at least as strong as Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, suggesting that Metamoran fusion is far more powerful than what the Dragon Ball GT Perfect file suggested for Dragon Ball GT, which stated dozens of times. However, it doesn't even stop there because Broly would eventually use Super Saiyan full power and fight against Super Saiyan Gogeta, another 50 times increase in power until Gogeta eventually uses Super Saiyan Blue himself, therefore making it a one-sided fight where he absolutely decimates Broly. Broly's growth in power in this movie is absolutely insane. His adaptation power boosts are simply monstrous. At the end of the movie, Goku comments that Broly might have been stronger than God of Destruction Beerus at full power. He does use the word might have, so it's a pretty vague statement. You can't say it for certain, but he does say it's stronger than Beerus, so it's likely that Broly is at least as strong as Beerus. You might ask, does Goku know fully how powerful Beerus is at full power? Well, Goku is just a tool being used to advocate the story from the writer's points of view. Broly was slated in the Jump magazine to be the strongest enemy they've ever come across. Does this mean Jiren as well. It most likely means fully powered Jiren as well as fully powered Beerus. However, I do argue that it might not necessarily mean awakened Jiren, the Jiren that fought against mastered Ultra Instinct Goku in the Tournament of Power. The scary thing is, if Broly wasn't so overpowered by Gogeta Blue, he would have continued getting stronger during that fight. His adaptation boosts are absolutely insane. So of course, we know the main body of events that happened in this movie, but the final details will likely be out in the coming weeks regarding this movie. Obviously, the people that went to watch the movie who reported it back to people like Anime AJ, Kenzairo, weren't necessarily power scalers and they may not have given us a full picture of what truly happened in terms of scaling the events themselves. Speaking from conjecture of course, but basing this off all the information we have at hand currently, Broly grew thousands of times in power in one battle. Sure he faced a few different opponents, but it was all the same battle for him. That is what's incredibly crazy. But this is where you come in, get comments in down in the comment section, would Broly be able to beat a fully powered Beerus or a fully powered Jiren or even an awakened Jiren? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Smash that like button, lend me your energy, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Until next time, Ad Astra.